I'm interested to know how how our musical communication originated. Where we are going to with, with music and what's going to be the music of the future. When I came across uh, the work of David Peterson, I, I, it just blew up my mind. So, wow, that is the right person to, to collaborate because, you know, here is someone who actually knows the mechanisms for, for developing new languages. If I'm creating a language that's going to be used in some television show that takes place over the span of a year or whatever, I create the language for that stage of it. But in order to get a realistic language, you have to go backwards and create an older state of it and evolve it forwards. The more we spoke about things, the more I understood that what he's doing in linguistics, it's more or less what I have been doing in music. And uh, I proposed to him, you know, let's try to develop something together. When I read the, uh, the Tempest, when I, when I saw the Tempest play, it really gripped me. There must be a, a story about this island. There, mu there, there must be something in this place that you know, Shakespeare thought of, but did not say in, in the play. We thought, let's try to imagine a prequel to the Tempest. The first project, the, the Evolve composition, which is very experimental, that composition was only to try things out. So uh, as soon as we started working on that original piece, I was like, all right, someday, someday that Tempest piece is coming. I know it's coming because I've seen how he works. <laughs> And he, of course, um, he developed the language to refer to things in the in the Lampedusa Island, you know, the, to refer to the story of, of the opera. I mean, it's still a language that no one actually speaks. Um, so the process of learning it was mainly um, repetition upon repetition, um, but because it had a lovely flow to it, that made it easier to get into. Whilst working with the singers, whether working with the performers, they were the ones that were very, very clear. We are very used to singing Italian, singing French, singing German, so to add another language to the repertoire, it just feels like there is another possibility to find another rhythm another sense of musicality. And when we listen to what they are doing, it's, a, it's an amazing delivery. A language has become alive thanks to the work that they've done. So it's an opera, so we have a choir, we have a dancer, we have two soloists. The visuals are in a way complementing everything. Each act is kind of a short film. The other element is the top projection, so we've got seasonal elements, lightning, water, and sun rays. We wanted to portray the, the sounds of these, uh, these islands. And, and it's a magic place inhabited by musical creatures. At the time when we um, started um, talking about composing this opera, um, it so happened that um, I came across um, work that was being developed by um, colleagues at MIT, 
in, uh, in Cambridge, in the States. And I read this article where a group there was working on taking the uh, particles from the super collider at CERN and trying to sonify them, to, to listen to, you know, to their behavior. So I got in touch with them and I arranged to, to visit them to see you know, if I could learn more about what they were doing. The experiments that they conduct is to uh, collide protons and this collision of protons generated debris of subatomic particles. You know, we started collaborating on this and I further developed their methodology. Instead of only making sounds with the particles, I devised methods to translate the, um, the parameters of these particles into musical uh, data. <laughs> It's not sort of um, notated in any way that we would recognise sort of classical notation. Um, so all the sounds are quite unexpected um, and that's quite helpful for my character because, you know, I'll hear something and then I'll react to it sort of in the moment. It reflects the, the character of, of Caliban, who in, in this particular uh, story is, is a teenager. And he's in that kind of teenage thing of suddenly being all stroppy and a bit sullen and suddenly being confident and then back again. And so in a way, the way that music works like that, it, it, is, you know, it helps me to sort of get into my inner teenager again. It's been a few years. A lot of um, interpretations of Caliban have been this like grotesque creature, but I wanted him to look beautiful. Even the chorus, um, I just wanted them to have this overall look as though they were jellyfish or, or something ca coming out of the sea. The character of Ariel as well, um, because she or he is meant to be a spirit, I wanted to again create this very fluid and uh, organic costume. There is a language within my movement, so it's, it's not been hard to express because I've been knowing what I've been needing to say. So it's this kind of balance between dance movement, sign language and kind of physical theatre that we found this kind of thread of Ariel's movement characterisation. I find it really fascinating working in any way that is a little bit different to the norm. So I'm um, working with Eduardo and the electronic sounds as well as obviously working with the operatic sounds of the BBC singers. That collaboration between the two created something really fruitful. So we are developing research towards new musical languages, new technologies for making music, new ways of looking into how music can be created. Thank you. You're right on mine. Yeah, it's really unusual. The uh, singing was lovely, the voices. It was trying to sort of get my head around it to start with, with the different acts as to what was happening, but it was really nice with the different language as well, the different words, but it was so expressive. So I had a fun and almost start to laugh at the end of the uh, second part. Uh, a great job uh, with this computer uh, part as well. Innovative, it's new, and yeah, I was just wowed. I, I, I know that he said it was sold out, but yeah, I didn't expect it to you know, really be sold out. But there was a bunch of people in there. That was wild. Whoa.